We simply hope that we don't have any animals that contract it because it could be a, a nightmare. Scientists still have more questions than answers about the coronavirus, but they're confident it's zoonotic, meaning it spread from animals to humans. The virus goes the other way, too, but only to certain animals. We don't know which animals are completely susceptible. We can make some early guesses. We know that the cat family can, the felids. We know that ferrets are, and also uh, non-human primates. The good thing is chickens, ducks, and pigs cannot get infected. These are major food sources for a lot of people, right? I think that's positive. Initial tests suggest cats and dogs are not in serious danger. One study found the virus doesn't replicate easily in dogs, but cats are susceptible. The same thing you would do to protect your family members if you are sick or you think you're sick, you would want to do that for your pets. And the good news is if your pet does pick it up, chances are they won't get sick. We have not been able to show that humans can be infected by any of these animals that might pick it up. Since about 60% of human infectious diseases are zoonotic, wildlife professionals are always on the lookout for them. We have known for a long time that the great apes and other primates are susceptible to human respiratory disease. We see it every year with cold season and with flu season. In parts of Asia where, you know, wild monkeys run around in parks, we do know they're susceptible. We don't know what that means. If people, like, throw them food or they cough and the monkeys pick it up. The first wild animals to test positive were five tigers and three lions at the Bronx Zoo. They likely caught the virus from an asymptomatic staff member. It was not too surprising. Uh, we knew that uh, in the past with the SARS outbreak 15 years ago, the cats were also susceptible then. The good news, of course, was they didn't get very sick at all. They didn't go off food. They had a very mild, mild infection. Wildlife experts in the U.S. are particularly concerned about animals that are already vulnerable to diseases, like bats. Scientists believe a Chinese bat species is the source of the novel coronavirus, known as SARS-CoV-2. They're concerned North American bats could also become carriers. They live in big, large communities. Some of these bat caves have 200,000 bats. There's bat caves with millions of bats. It's like New York City. And then it would spread amongst them. The probability is astronomical for a zoonotic event to happen. But when that happens, you may give it back to more bats that can then locally transmit. We don't know yet if uh, bats can be infected with SARS-CoV-2 in a laboratory setting. Uh, there is active scientific interest in that, and the result of exposure in the wild may be different from what we would measure in the laboratory. We interact with a lot of the people who would be out in the field now. We've recommended that they uh, put off their, their capturing and handling of bats for the time being. Endangered ferret specialists are being extra cautious too. Black-footed ferrets are native to North America, but only a few hundred are left in the wild due to diseases like the plague. We know domestic ferrets, like pet ferrets, the European ferret, can get this virus. They don't get very sick, but they shed a lot of virus. We don't know if the black-footed ferret, which is endangered, if that got introduced into the wild population or into captive populations, if they might suffer from it. We had to make the decision that reproduction uh, is going to suffer this year. We wanted to minimize the, the contact of individual staff. If humans do spread the coronavirus to wildlife, it will become much harder to eradicate. Once it's in wildlife, it's very hard to get rid of it. So it's like opening Pandora's box. So prevention now makes much more sense. Because trying to control it later will be nearly impossible. But experts stressed there's no evidence that animals have given the virus back to people since the pandemic started. I would certainly say that we could inadvertently create some viral feedback loop. Um, but I'd like to put that, you know, as a scientist, distinguish between that being a possibility, and what's the probability of that happening? So I might get hit by a meteor tomorrow. It's certainly a possibility, but the probability of being hit by a meteor is very low. Is it possible? Of course it is. Is it very likely? Maybe not. 